Okay, hi everyone and welcome to the Friday webinar number six. And in this short webinar today, we're going to be looking at the idea of um, activities in the VLE. So first of all, I'm gonna let you see my screen. Uh, so I've set it so that you can see my screen. And what you'll see is in that I'm in my VLE and on my a particular course of mine. Um, this is uh, my training course, you can see it's organized by weeks and I'm actually in week one of the course. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this idea of adding activities to a course. So I'm gonna turn editing on, first of all, on my screen. And you'll see when I then look in, um, looking in week one, I'm just in week one at the moment, um, I have the chance to add either resources or add activities. Now resources, something static, you know, a file, um, a piece of video, uh, a, a web link, that kind of thing. But an activity is something which the student gets involved in, the student does something. Um, and I wanted to look just at two or three activities that you might select from the list of activities, which are things which uh, are related to assessment. So, I mean, they're, they're, because actually if I drop down this list, you'll see there's quite a long list of activities, possible activities that you can add to the VLE. I would say, to be frank, some of them are not worth using, and, and certainly there's some of them there which are, are not really relevant to us at all. Uh, they come kind of preset with the VLE, with Moodle. But there's uh, two or three activities in there which I would say are worth having and are worth using. And I wanted to look at uh, a couple of them that are related to assessment uh, today. Okay, so I've got editing turned on just at the moment. And you see in week one, I've got four items. And the fourth item is a quiz. Um, now, I'm not going to actually look at adding quizzes today. I think that, you know, adding quizzes, quizzes can be a little bit complicated to add, and I, I think that's really worth a webinar all in itself. But um, I've already created a quiz, or pre-created a, a, a quiz. It's on the subject of water. It, it comes from another course on water studies. And I'm actually going to show you the idea of adding a certificate in relation to a quiz. So if, for example, you had a course, and you had a quiz in it, and perhaps the quiz was a summary quiz. You know, the quiz was a sum, summation of all the uh, knowledge of the course and people being tested at the end by the quiz. Um, then maybe you would want to add a certificate at the end to go with that quiz. Now, I, again, this very much depends on the kind of students you're working with and the audience you're working with. But I'm thinking in lower level studies or perhaps with younger students, it might be a good idea to uh, offer them a chance to gain a certificate. So with this water quiz, I'm going to then add another activity, or following this water quiz, I'm going to add another activity, which is called certificate. So I click on certificate, and I get the option to add um, the details of my certificate. So I'm going to call it water quiz certificate, or I'll call it water studies certificate. I could put some accompanying text to it, but I'm not going to in this case. I'll look at the issue options, and once it is issued, I'm gonna send an email to teachers to tell them that it has been issued. You can add other people's emails if you want to for, for that. The delivery of it, how the student gets it, I'm gonna choose forced download. So in other words, the student gets it um, download, and it can open a new window, it can be sent by email, I'm gonna uh, force download. And there's no particular necessity to save the certificate into the system. It's the student that's going to get it. These aren't really certificates. I would say these aren't certificates which are in any sense administrative. You're not using them for administrative purposes. It's more um, giving the student uh, some kind of um, acknowledgement or some kind of incentive. You know. So I then go on to the text options. And I'm not going to put a print date. Well, yeah, let's put a date issued on it and the date format. Um, I don't have to use a print code if I don't want to. Print code is a unique number that gets printed on a certificate so that you can identify it just in case someone's trying to fake a certificate or something like that. But to be honest, as I, again, as I said, these are not really administrative certificates. They're uh, more for um, encouraging students. And this is the one where I'm selecting what the certificate is for. And in this case, I'm going to select it as being for the water quiz. So the certificate is offered on the basis of the water quiz. And the 
because the water quiz is a percentage quiz, I'm going to choose a percent grade format. You can see I've got a points grade or a letter grade. You know, it could be pass, fail. Um, and am I going to print the actual outcome? Well, I don't actually have a choice with that one because I've, I've done it um, relating to a quiz. But I could choose a course outcome, uh, you know, some other outcome other than the quiz to be shown on the certificate. Um, I can do credit hours if, if it was relevant, only it's not in this case. And I'm going to print the teacher's name as well. Actually, this course has got multiple teachers, so all their names will appear on it. In terms of design options, then, um, there are, you know, do I want a border image? Let's have a fancy black image roundabout. Do I want border lines? Let's have them blue. Um, do I want a watermark image on it? No, let's not bother. Do I want a signature image? Um, and I can actually have Susan's signature because we've we've got that as a, a as something that um, is set within our system. And do I want a logo image? And I've got a Glasgow Clyde College logo again set within the system. Um, so let's see. I'm not dead sure if these will print. You sometimes you have to try these a little bit and see if they're going to print right. So let's do save and return to course now. Okay, uh, I'll turn my editing off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log back into uh, my course as my student. But what you see now, we've now got the Water Studies Certificate. So I'm going to log back into my course as my student, which is uh, my test student, which is Harry Potter. Uh, so I'm going to log out as myself, and I'm going to log back in as Harry Potter. H. Potter. And I've already got his password in there. And there he is. So... Um, that's Harry Potter's home page, and we'll go to the, we'll show all courses, and he's on my course, John Training 2, so he's going there, and he's going into week one, and he's going to do the quiz. As I said, in, in another webinar, I'll look at quizzes, but in this case, it's a 12-question quiz. He's going to attempt the quiz now, and I've actually, for speed, I've set the quiz up so that all the questions are presented on the one page, although often you, you, you might want to have each question on a separate page. Now, I know the answers here. I just I want Harry to do well, so I'm going to tick B. I'm going to tick false. I'm going to tick uh, D, D, and A. Uh, I think I've, I know the answers. I might have got it wrong here, but D, D, and A. Uh, B, A, B, B, and A, and B, uh, B, A, B, then D, and then three forces. So false, false, false. Okay, so that's Harry's done the quiz. He clicks on next, and it says, right, you've done all the answers. Do you want to go back and try anything again, or do you want to submit them all and finish? So I'm going to submit all and finish. And it's warning me that that'll be that. That's my last chance. Okay, so what's Harry achieved? 10.83 out of 12, 90%. So I did get one of them wrong, actually. Uh, I'm not sure which one that was. And I can review my answers, look down through them, and uh, I can see that uh, partially correct. Uh, there's more than one option for nine, which three of the following are true. Sorry, yes, I forgot that. That one's uh, actually got three choices. Okay, so that's it. I finished my review. Harry's done his quiz, and he's done well. And his grade is 10.83 out of 12, 12 points for 12 questions. So what Harry can do now as a student is go back here, go to the Water Study Certificate, and what he can do is click on the link, Water Study Certificate, and it's taken a wee moment there, but it will do the job, hopefully. It's, it's taken him to where it tells him what his grade was for the quiz, and now he can get a certificate. So I'm going to click on Get Your Certificate. And as I said, I, I set it as a download option, so he's going to have to download it now. But do you notice as well Harry Potter um, getting awarded a certificate uh, he's been sent an email. This is actually because I, I've got Harry Potter's um, email set up as mine. Um, I've seen that. So, um, sorry, sorry, my apologies. That's come into my my own email. So as a teacher, I've been told that Harry's just claiming his certificate. Because remember, I set up an email alert. So it's just alerting me that Harry's been awarded a certificate. I click on the Get Your Certificate. I've done it there. I'm going to click Open just so that we can see it. But otherwise, he could save it down to his machine. And there's our certificate. There's it with a border, with a border lines, a black border, blue border lines. This certifies that Harry Potter has completed the course, John Training 2, 
Walter Quiz Grade, 90.28%. There's Susan Walsh's signature on there, and here's the name of all the teachers. And there's the Clyde logo down there. Uh, as I say, you, you, sometimes what you have to do is mess about with it, with the, the, the logos. We, we've got smaller Clyde logos than that. That might be a better one to put on, and so on and so forth. It takes a little bit of messing about sometimes to be sure you've got certificate right. But it's a, it's a way, and a possible way, to award students certificate. As I said, it's more of a motivational thing, and it might be in a lower level course as a result of completing a quiz successfully. You know, I'm going to close that certificate. And now I'm going to log out as Harry Potter because um, that's him finished. I'm going to log back in as me. And uh, just put my password in. OK. And I'm going to go back to that course. So in week one, what we did is we had a quiz and we had a certificate to it. And that was one kind of activity. A second possible activity, and I'm going to turn editing on, is something called a checklist. If we again we look at that list of activities, there's something called a checklist, and that kind of relates. What what I'm trying to do is these things are slightly related to each other in that they're all around the theme of assessment. I'm going to add something called a checklist, and what a checklist is is a kind of visual reminder of how far you've got with the course. So it's for the student's benefit, although it can be of help to the teacher, but it's principally for the student's benefit. So I'm going to add checklist, and checklist. Um, if you just bear with me, sorry for uh, two seconds, I'm just wanting to, I was just checking that I didn't have any, um, anyone, uh, aye, nothing on my uh, questions there at the moment, sorry. So, checklist um, is something which you can use to um, give a visual um, progress report, in effect, or self-progress report for the student. So we'll call this, uh, we'll just call it my checklist, but I mean you could call it uh, various things. And again, you can put some text with it. So let's, in this case, put use this checklist to keep a record of your progress, of your progress. And I'll click, uh, I'll tick that so that that's displayed with the title. Users can add their own items. No, I don't want the students adding items to them. And it can be something that only the student uses, or the, only the teacher uses, or the student and teacher. In this case, we're going to have it just for the student. I can work with due dates in it as well, um, but in, in this case, I'm not going to do that. And the teacher can add comments to the checklist, and we'll, we'll leave that as a possible. And email when checklist is complete, yeah, the teacher, students using this one themselves, so they're going to know it when it's complete. So we'll just do one for the teacher only. Um, and show course modules in checklist. Now, this is an important choice. If I say no, then the checklist has nothing on it. If I say whole course, it shows everything that's in the course. Now, in this my particular course here, that's quite a lot. And maybe I don't want a checklist for the whole course. So I'm just going to do a checklist for the section I'm in, i.e. week one. So let's do current section. OK. Um, check off when modules complete. And you can set it so that it, uh, you know the teacher can override it uh, and so forth. We'll, we'll leave it like that. Um, so I'm going to save and return to course. And I'm going to turn the editing off. And there's the my checklist. OK. So again, I'm going to go back in as Harry Potter. I'll come out as me. I'll go back in as Harry Potter. And let's again go in as Harry. And he's going to John Training 2. And we'll see that in week one, he's got my checklist. And it's saying, use this checklist to keep a record of your progress. And obviously, in week one, there are one, two, three, four items. Not You wouldn't really count the certificate, but I mean, it will appear on the checklist. But let's choose my checklist. And you can see, here we go, we've got the item. So Harry can say, right, well, I've, I've done that thing. I've done that thing. I've now done that thing. You know, and it's given him a progress bar showing how he's done. I've done that thing. And now, finally, I've printed off my certificate. I've done everything for week one. And so as far as Harry's concerned, that's the checklist done. So we error message came up there. I'm not quite sure what that was about. Um, so if I go back to week one, that's it done. And the, the checklist is all finished. Um, if I log out as a teacher now, 
I go back in as myself and password in, go back in as myself. And I go back to my training course and I can go into week one and I can look into my checklist and I can see, um, I mean, I've got a progress, but that, that's really not what I'm wanting to see. I want to view progress. And I can see I've got two students because I've got another test student. I actually is a teacher, but I call him any teacher. But you can see Harry has progressed. He's progressed to the end. And I've made, uh, and my any teacher has made no progress at all. And if I had 20 students, I'd see 20 of those. You, you might see the colors aren't very good, but there's a little tick there against the, the, the each item and so forth. So just as a quick visual summary for the teacher, it's handy. But as a, as a visual guide to the student as to how they're progressing, it's, I would say it's useful, you know, it's not going to set the world alight, but it's it's useful. I think actually now I'm looking at that, that error message I got. It was meant to send me an email when Harry had completed his, and it didn't do it. So that's where the error has arisen, because I should have got a little email popping up for that, and I haven't received that. But um, otherwise, uh, I mean, everything's worked fine. And you can modify that there's little uh, settings you can do in the checklist. If I go into the the checklist, I can edit the checklist, and on those items I can change colors of items, I can hide items, I can shift the items around, I can add a manual item, you know, add something else that, that's not been automatically generated and so forth. Um, but, you know, it's, I, I wouldn't say this one is um, absolutely fabulous, but I think it's, again, for certain kinds of courses, it's quite useful, and it's a nice little visual progress uh, monitor for students. So that's the second activity I've showed you, the checklist. OK, I'm going to go back into the course. And we're going to take uh, one more activity now, which is much more of a common one, and one which a lot of people add, um, which is the assignment. And I'm going to go back into week one, and we're going to add an assignment to this. So again, I'm going to turn my editing on. Now, an assignment is something that a student has to do and submit to you. You know, it might be an essay, or it might be um, uh, a PowerPoint, or you know, something that they've got to submit. So, I'm going to add an activity, and the activity I'm going to add is assignment. So, effectively, with assignment, the student is uploading something to you directly and into the VLE. I give the assignment name, and let's say it might be um, business report, uh, and it may be final draft. Sometimes what is good is if you're um, doing something like a business report and there are one draft to be submitted, you know, for example, the, the uh, graded unit report and there are different drafts, set up an assignment for each stage. It's, it's a better way to keep track of them that way. Um, so that's a business report final draft. Um, again, I can have a description here, you know, um, you will submit your final draft here, something like that, and that can be displayed on the course page if I want. If there's files that need to go with the assignment, something they need to read, you know, you can add the file there. You can also set a date range for it. So I'm going to enable the date range. So I'll enable the start date. So by default, it's today. And by default, the due date is a week's time, but I can change that if I want. And I can also set a cutoff date so they can't submit after the due date. And I'm going to set that cutoff date, and I'm going to keep the cutoff date the same as the due date, so they can't submit uh, any time after that. And then there are submission types. Now, in this case, uh, the Mahara portfolio is something uh, which we've got as a Mahara is a kind of uh, online portfolio system that we've got built into our VLE. Um, but in this case, it's just going to be a file submission. I won't bother saying anything about these just now, although that they are uh, or at least the Poodle thing is an interesting thing. Actually, it's, it's a piece of audio recording. Um, so the file submission, how many files am I going to let them upload? You know, it depends on the kind of assignment. I'll leave it at one just now. Am I going to set a file maximum size? And am I going to let them do this, this uh, audio submission, which is quite an interesting thing to do, but we're, we're not looking at that just now. Um, and then what types of feedback can I, am I going to give them? And I'm just going to give feedback comments, although I could also add feedback files. And I can do an audio feedback. And actually, that is, by default, that is enabled. So I could, once they've submitted something, I could give an audio feedback on it. 
We're not going to look at the feedback uh, today because I haven't really got time just about setting up the assignment, but it's something we'll look at in another session as well. Okay, the submission settings. And it's good that they have to click a submit button, so I would always keep that at yes. And that, sometimes it's a good idea to have it so that they've got to um, do a submission statement as well, so, uh, accept a submission statement. In this case, I'm not letting them reopen their attempt. Once they've uploaded it, that's it, you know, but you can change it to uh, a manual reopening, i.e. you have to reopen it, or an automatic one until they're passed, so they can reopen it until they're passed. Um, and mostly the rest of it uh, we don't need to think about, but, um, well, that's, that's not true. There's two more things we need to think about, but, I mean, these ones we're not too worried about. Do we want it to go through Turnitin, the plagiarism checker? Now, if you don't need it to do that, then by default it's set at no. So in this case, we'll leave it at no. And we'll not look at turn it in just now, but that's a separate thing. But it's not, by default, it won't go through the checker. And the grade, what kind of grade are you going to give it? Are you going to give it a point grade, or are you going to give it a scale grade such as pass-fail? So if I choose scale, you'll see that I have various scales to choose from. So uh, let's choose a pass-fail scale. So I'll be able to give it a pass or a fail. Uh, the rest of it we don't need to worry about, so save and return to course. And there's my assignment set up. Business report, final draft. You'll submit your final draft here. Now let's just see Harry submitting an assignment to that. So I'm going to log out again, and I'm going to log back in as Harry Potter. And this time when he comes in, he'll scroll down to his course and he'll see actually a notification he's got an assignment that needs attention because it's uh, it's open today and its due date is one week so that gives him a quick link to get there notice by the way his checklist is showing on his home page as well um, so he goes to the submission but he, he could have done it by going just into the course week one going to business report final draft and he's in the same place he's going to add a submission so he clicks add submission now, he's got to find a file, so he'll click on Add File. He'll browse for that file in his files. I'll look in my Documents Library. I'll just find um, uh, a Word document. I'll upload this. Now, sometimes what well, it's a good idea, if, if, your document, if you're the student, if your document doesn't have a sensible name, then give it a sensible name. In other words, Business Report Harry Potter Final, or something like that, you know? Upload this file, and he gets a final chance. You will submit your final draft here. Are you happy with that file? Do you want to change it and so forth? If not, save changes, and it gets uploaded. And uh, oh, sorry, no, uh, it gets uploaded, but he hasn't actually submitted it yet. So he's now got a chance to edit that submission again. Does he want to change the file, or does he want to submit the assignment? Once it's submitted, you won't be able to make any more changes. So let's choose Submit Assignment, and there's the statement. This assignment is my own work, blah, 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 continue. And in it goes. And finally, we'll look at it as the teacher. And again, I go back in as, and I could have set, I didn't set, but I could, one of the settings you can make notifications, which you'll notice I didn't set. I could have set that to give me an email every time a student submits a piece. Uh, sorry, I'm just remembering my password. In here. Uh, okay. Oops, sorry, I'm, I've misremembered my password. There we go. That should be me in. And I go back to my course and back to week one of John Training 2. And if I look at the assignment, business report, final draft, um, view grade all submissions. You know, there's two participants on the course. One report needs grading, view grade all submissions. And there we are, Harry Potter submitted for grading. Very simply, actually, uh, I said maybe we didn't have time to do it, but I think we, we'll just very quickly, I want to grade Harry Potter's report. So I, I click on there. And the grade option I have is, in this case, because of the, sorry, the scale I chose, I've got excellent, in that case, current grade in grade book. And this is the Poodle thing. I, um, I think uh, 
because I'm doing the webinar at the moment, that's kind of conflicting with it. But this Poodle thing that would would let me actually do an audio uh, comment on the on the uh, report of Harry's, or I can type comments here like this, blah 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 blah, and it's set to notify the student when I've graded it as well. So I'm going to save my changes and continue, and that's all done. So it's been graded, it's been submitted, blah blah blah. One last thing, go back in as Harry and see what Harry's now seeing. Harry Potter has submitted his assignment. He goes back in. On his home page, it's saying you have assignments that need attention again. Uh, and the assignment, uh, I, I think those are two other ones, yeah. So anyway, let's, let's, just, let's just go in. So let's go into week one. And the business report final draft, and Harry's looking in here, and he sees that it's been graded, and uh, he sees his feedback, he sees his grade, he sees his feedback there, and who graded it, and so forth. So there we go. And to be honest, I think the assignment is one of the most powerful components in uh, the VLE. So what I've shown you here is three activities, uh, the certificate, the checklist, and the assignment, which can be added to your VLE. Uh, course and which I think add a lot of functionality. Two of them are, are, are less uh, for less complex courses, the certificate and the um, checklist, but the assignment will work in any course and particularly well in, in higher level courses. So hopefully that's been useful. Um, just before I finish, can I, can I just ask if, if there's any questions, feel free to type them. Um, and if there's not any questions at all, I'll just give it a wee moment to see. Um, if there's not any questions at all, then I'm going to end the session. And when I end the session, uh, you'll be thrown out of the room. Um, so, I mean, by all means, feel free to, to uh, finish up yourself just now. If there's no questions, then I'm going to end the session and be thrown out uh, of the room. I say thrown out, that sounds a bit violent, but the, the session will end for you. Okay, thanks very much for your attendance, and uh, we'll have another webinar for you next week.